Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tours Program of Art Fair Philippines 2021. I am Dindina Raneta, one of the co-founders of the fair. Our tour today is a virtual studio visit to the space, uh, to the studio and residency space of visual artist Alfredo Esquilio. Before we begin, I'd like to mention that we won't be having a Q&A session at the end. If you have any question for the artist, you may type it in the Q&A box and we will relay it to him. We will play the video twice today to give the others who may have entered late a chance to watch a full video. Uh, Art Fair Philippines is presented, Art Fair Philippines Talks is presented together with our education partners, the Ateneo Art Gallery, Museum Foundation of the Philippines and Art Review. Alfredo Esquilio, or better known as Esqui, graduated with a degree in fine arts from the University of Santo Tomas, and not long after, started to receive recognition in local and regional art competitions. These include the Philippine Art Awards and the ASEAN Art Awards in 1995 and 1996, and the 13 Artists Awards from the Cultural Center of the Philippines in 2000. As he established his brand of magic cum social realist style, his canvases became necessary fixtures in exhibitions that define junctures in contemporary Philippine art. He's also the founder of Eskinita Art Gallery at Makati, and today he'll be showing us a tour of his of his Eskinita art farm in Batangas. Please enjoy this tour as, El as Eski welcomes us, welcomes us into the Eskinita art farm. Hello, good afternoon, I'm Eski. Welcome to Eskinita art farm. So here's my studio. Um, I have here some of my collection, uh, works by uh, R.G. Habulan and his father, my mentor, Renato Habulan, and uh, by Marvin Kison, one of the top class awardees of the Sinita. And uh, here's what I've been working on for the past year. This is my new series. Uh, it's called Sai Sai. Sai Sai is a Tagalog word uh, which means to tell a story or it's a word that connotes something that is relevant to people or something that has meaning. And Sai Sai denotes something that makes sense. So here I'm using the same approach of appropriation. Again, I'm using old photographs in which I pampered upon the imagery was to inject lessons in history. This is a brown carabos burden. So it's a portrait of uh, William Taft on top of a carabao. So you can see here the heavyweight of William Taft. Uh, it represents the heavyweight of colonization. Uh, and uh, by way of uh, the benevolent assimilation, the Americans wanted us to be educated, um, civilized, and then Christianized. As a process, tampering reflects the way colonization tampered upon our history. Um, so here, in most, in most of my works, just like Mama King Lee, uh, there is a story of betrayal. Uh, the difference is that the betrayal is now coming from the East in the persona of the dragon. So I made a version of Mama Kili, this is part two. Um, it's basically the same story, um, but here the child becomes the baby Aguinaldo, who fought against the Americans in, in the Philippine-American War. Um, so in the picture, uh, you see Mama Kili <coughs> uh, pretending to take care of the child, and the child uh, is dressed with the American flag, but now, is decorated with uh, amulets 
or the Philippine amulet called uh, Ting and Ting. And you'll see at the bottom, um, the mother, the Mama King Lee, um, points his gun at the child, um, but then Aguinaldo is he is represented with his own gun. So it represents, represents the war. For this series, I also use oil on EVA. This is a material which I discovered in the 90s. EVA is also the more durable alternative to rubber. But here, I'm using a local brand of EVA with a distinct texture which is just perfect for my figurative paintings. My works are also experimental or non-orthodox in terms of medium and processes. For my oil on canvas, I have my own preparation. I introduce an innovation to standards in terms of preparing the ground. Um, I use sawdust for my own ground. That's why if you look closely at my paintings, they have a different texture and sheen. So also because of the texture, my techniques has developed specifically for this kind of ground. I was able to do a lot of layering and glazing and I also use this technique called dry brush which makes my works look softer and subdued. I also control my lighting. I try not to produce too much light because as a metaphor, too much light can produce silaw or glare. Silaw is that bounce of light that attacks the eye to the point of blinding or deceiving the viewer. So yes, I want my works to recede so the audience will come closer to my works for more introspection. In terms of habits, routines, I work day and night uh, at different times of the day. Uh, painting is always a solitary work so I need music, loud music, jazz preferably. Uh, music helps me take out the stress due to deadlines, pressures in the art scene. Um, I'm usually multitasking. Because aside from being an artist, I'm head of the family, I'm also running my own artist-run projects at Esquinita. So in between painting schedules, talking to a lot of people, sending emails, messages, I have to be very active in social media so I can promote other artists. I also do our uh, exhibit designs for our shows. Um, it's all enjoyable. So here inside the Esquinita Art Farm, we have three structures. Uh, so the first one is called the Ancestral Gallery. Uh, it's been here when we purchased the property, so we just renovated it. And then uh, here at the left is my studio, which I will show you later on. And the other one is the main gallery. Uh, so we have two galleries, the Ancestral and the main gallery. Uh, both uh, galleries can accommodate uh, four shows at a time. We have programs here um, such as um, an art residency program which will start uh, later this year. Um, it will be attended by six Tokulas recipients. And then in the near future, we're gonna have um, a ceramic uh, studio and workshop. Um, at the back of the property so the art residents would experience um, new medium and new processes besides painting. So we're also developing a sculpture garden here at the Skinita Art Farm. Uh, right now we have a functional sculpture of Richard Bushani at the front. It's a gate. It's called Esther's Gate which is a tribute to my mother who's a dressmaker and I have my work at the back. Um, Empire Lost and Found which is installed within a group of trees um, So now I'm here with my mother Mommy Esther uh, so I'm doing a collaborative art with my mother. So this is the first time. So as an artist, uh, I love to do collaborations with uh, fellow artists. I think my mom is an artist too. She's a dressmaker but she studied fashion design. So 
we're here at my mother's workshop. Uh, she will be sewing all the cut fabric um, to produce the banderitas. So let's see what happens. And now I'm also doing a collaborative work with my mother. So we're working on an art installation for the front garden. Uh, it will be hangings of hundreds of banderitas made out of clothes, retazos, and other fabrics. And we will call this anything under the sun. Thank you for coming to today's tour of the Escanita Art Par Farm with, with uh, Alfredo Esquilio. We hope you enjoyed. Do check the, the Art Fair website for more upcoming events. Thank you and good afternoon. Tomorrow, uh, we have a talk with Petra Cortright, Jeremy Couliard, and Kaykan, uh, the artists commissioned by the Art Fair through DATA. We hope to see you again.